Good evening, everybody. Uh, so on behalf of uh, Chairman Rich, I'm just going to uh, pretend I'm him for the first portion of the meeting until he gets connected and can fulfill his duties and, as usual. But until then, you'll have to bear with me. So call to order the Tuesday, February 15th, 2022 virtual meeting for planning and zoning. Um, I can go ahead and do the roll call. Rich Roberts. Here. Commissioner Allard, I am here. Commissioner Hammer. Let me see his name. No Hammer. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Oikel. Here. Commissioner Dean. Here. Commissioner Homicki. Here. Commissioner Edwards. Here. Here. Commissioner Vieira. Here. Oh, okay. Commissioner Drake. Here. Commissioner Liam Bruni. Here. And Commissioner Thompson. Here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got eleven. Nice job, everybody. Um, no old business. Moving right on to some new business. Uh, so item three point one, public hearing three thousand eight twenty one Z. Stefan and Kara Crespo seeking a special permit in accordance with section 351B1 vehicular storage uh, of the Weathersfield zoning regulations to park a snowmobile trailer in the driveway at 15 Crest Street. Is there someone on behalf of the applicant? I don't see them here, Ryan. I see Stefan oh, Crespo. Okay, sorry. Crespo. Yep, I see them. Uh, right. And just, uh, I, I accidentally skipped over. So, being a public hearing, uh, we are gonna hear a presentation uh, from the applicant. Um, we'll have some questions, we'll have some back and forth. We will hear from the public. If there's anybody here from the public who wishes to comment, we'll take that into account, um, you know, if, if uh, and give the applicant a chance to address any comments that they get from the public, uh, after which we'll, uh, if we're satisfied with the information we have and we're gonna make a motion, uh, we will close the hearing, have a discussion, and then rule on it. So uh, with that, I will hand the floor over to the Crespos. How you doing? Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm Steph, and this is my wife, Kara. Uh, and you'll probably hear our daughter making some noise in the background because it's not, not quite bedtime yet. So <laughs> um, I apologize uh, in advance. So um, so this was, I'll just go over. I didn't uh, write anything out, but um, this is in a nutshell, this is for us to have a 10 foot snowmobile trailer um, in our driveway, um, basically for the months, basically for the winter months. So uh, for the months, I believe I put on the application. December through April. Yeah, December through April. Yeah. Um, during those months, uh, it kind of I don't really have the option to put it in the backyard uh, due to the, the weather. And if you are familiar with uh, Crest Street, it's very, um, we have a lot of issues with water uh, in the yards. Um, so in the summer months, it will reside in the back of the yard uh, as it has. Uh, and then in the winter months, we, you know, it's a, tr it's a small trailer, it's 10 foot clamshell. Uh, you can't, you know, if you're not familiar, it's, it does house two snowmobiles in it, um, but it's it it's like a it's enclosed. Yeah, it's enclosed. So we did include pictures. I don't know if you guys all have that, but um, there is photos sure. of the of the trailer. Uh, it is enclosed. You can't see the machines inside. Um, and I try to take a couple of shots of sort of what it looks like if you were to be driving up and down the street or walking up and down the street. Um, because of its size and the trucks that we have, the, our two vehicles in the driveway, uh, you can't even really see it uh, very well, even when it's in the driveway. It's sort of surrounded by our vehicles most of the time. Uh, and during those winter months, most weekends, weather permitting, uh, it's not even here. Uh, we go up north uh, as a family and we snowmobile on as many weekends as the snow allows. So that's that's really it, guys, uh, and we're here to answer any questions as well. We tried to be, you know, as descriptive as possible in the in the application and and provide some good pictures so everybody could see. Yeah, 
Mr. Chairman, could I pose a question, please? I'll speak on behalf of Rich, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, it, it seems that you have previous approval. I wasn't on the commission then, but if I understand correctly, you had previous approval for both the uh, snowmobile trailer and I guess that's an RV in your picture there as well. Yeah, so I'll I'll address that. Uh, thanks for asking. So I I, I off. I also thought we had pre-approval for the snowmobile trailer. Um, the snowmobile trailers, uh, we've been homeowners in Weathersfield since 2014. And the snowmobile trailer has been here uh, since we moved in. And uh, we pulled the permit for the trailer, which is what you're referring to or may recall. Um, and we've never had any issues with the snowmobile trailer. Uh, it's always been in the driveway for, again, since 2014. Um, since, since we've owned it and, and where it's been, it's, we haven't changed where it's been. Um, like I said, it, in the summer months, it, I, I don't need, you know, I don't want it in my way. Right. So it, it benefits me for it to be out of the way and, and in the backyard during the summer months, but in the winter months, we obviously trailer it in and out almost every weekend if we can. Um, but it's never been an issue, um, since 2014. Uh, I, I guess maybe when we had our hearing for the camper, maybe I just understood wrong because I would have addressed it had I known that it couldn't be in my driveway during the winter months. So I'm, I'll be hundred percent honest. I'm still not hundred percent clear on why it's not allowed in my driveway during the winter months as it's never been an issue, but there is, there is one complaint of that's not in our neighborhood um, that sort of keeps uh, calling out just about anything we do wrong. So I think that's where this came from to be honest with you, and why this has come up just as of recent, to be honest with you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Um, uh, I guess this will be a bit of a refresher for me. I was at that hearing. Um, so I remember then we discussed the camper, we discussed the potential, because we, we did discuss the snowmobile um, trailer and if we could shift everything backwards, but that would have required, what was there, was there something in the back? There was a reason why there we is. push it all the way back. Yeah. Can so you refresh my memory on that. Yeah, sure. So uh, that, that was discussed and what, what I thought we communicated and I could be wrong, but what I thought we communicated is that we would swap them um, during, you know, during the seasons, right? So the, the camper obviously is like a more of a, a summer sort of toy and the snowmobile trailer is more of a winter toy. So in those, you know, in the summer months, the, the snowmobile trailer goes in the back and then in the winter months, it goes in front of the camper. So um, like I said, during the winter, I really, you know, with snow and, and even if there's not snow, um, getting any trailer in the backyard is just gonna be, you know, it's just gonna wreck my yard and potentially get stuck and, and have to get pulled out. So, um, if I had, if I had the means to do it, I, I would have done it and we wouldn't be here now. Um, but unfortunately it's not really an option to put one of them back there during the winter months, winter months. So, but the, the snow, the camper trailer, as you can see, probably in the pictures is beside the house. Also, you have a fenced in, this is George, you have a fenced in backyard. That's correct. Right? Yeah, Plus, I, we, there tends to be water coming down through all the houses there. There, the there is. Area. Yeah, it's it's not just us. It's, it's not it's, not conducive really to uh, moving anything back in there. I, it's not bad. It's just enough to be annoying and not uh, not allow you to do that. Yeah, that's that's true. And you know, we we actually when we had the fence put in. And this is before we even knew that there would be an issue. I purposely put in a extra large gate behind the camper so that we could put the snowmobile trailer back there. Um, it's with major precision we get it through there, but you know it's about an inch of clearance on each side. But we can do it, um, and we we have done it to put it in the back. So it's. And that was without sort of any probing or pushing for us to do it. it was just to for me to have it out of the way, right? So um, we purposely did that. So I, I can actually get it back there in the summer months, um, but it's not something I could I could 
again, do during the winter or sort of wet months. And it's certainly something I wouldn't be able to do like you know, every other weekend. Yeah. It would be, uh, I'd probably end up wrecking the fence if I, if I had to be honest at some point. Does this trailer, does this trailer fit in the garage? No. Brian, I got a question. Yep. It's too tall. Too tall. Yeah. Yeah. I wish. Brian, I got a question. Go for it. Uh, I, I'm going to guess that you uh, take off as early as you can on Friday and you probably end up coming back from up north late Sunday when you have good snow. Is that pretty accurate? That's that's worst case scenario. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we sometimes we try to squeak out a Thursday to Monday. But yes, that's that's like typically what it is. So a lot of times the trailer's gone three to four days in a, a week uh, in the season that you can use your sleds. It is. We we have friends uh, that also ski and snowmobile that have a place up there. So it's uh, we are back and forth as much as possible on the weekend. Yep. Yeah. And you may even leave your trailer up there, uh, depending on conditions and whatnot. Uh, we do. We do. Sometimes it gets yep. tough with weather, because if I leave it up there and we get, you know, yep. if they get dumped on and, and, you know, then I'm like trying to dig it out. Right. And it can get stuck there. So we actually broached that like, Hey, maybe we could just leave it up there for the winter. So this is not an yeah. issue, but it's, it's really not possible. I understand. I got you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Ryan, can I ask a question? David Drake. Of course. Uh, I'm not quite clear on the camper. Why is, isn't the camper can't be put in the back during off season I get from your letters. It sounds like you didn't use it all. You don't use it all winter. So why, why can't that be putting all the way back there and put the snowmobile next to the house? That that wouldn't fit. The snowmobile the trailer will fit, but the camper won't. It won't fit in the back of the yard? Mm -mm. Also, in our previous hearing, it was discussed that having it beside our house actually uh, benefits all our neighbors from seeing it most of the time. Um, so if we put it all the way in the back of the house, um, if you were at the bottom of Crest Street and looked up everybody's backyards, um, right now it's completely open. You could see probably four or five houses up all through the backyards. And if it was all the way in the back, it would be more of um, it an eyesore yeah, than it would be. You'd end up actually okay, so, seeing it more. Okay, yeah. so, yeah, and then Dave, the pictures, just, it's just to clarify, it's not um, as part of the approval in um, 2019, they were permitted to keep that RV in the driveway as long as it's not forward of the house. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And it, uh, it backs up to the fence and the pad that it's sitting on. So okay. if they were going to move it back. Uh, they were going to have to do some either regrading more pad gravel, okay. something. Uh, okay. So, so, so the yard's not limits. fenced in. It's just a fence behind it. It's not a, there's, there's the a fence behind it. Oh, no, okay. it is fenced in. The yard is fenced in. The backyard is fenced. The backyard is fenced into the back. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so if you, if you put the, the Okay, so I understand you have permission to put it next to the house, but if you, so you're saying you can't put it in the backyard and people would see it. How would they see it if it's fenced in? It's just a chain link it's fence, chain link. and this is. Oh, a, okay, okay. Yeah, good. okay. I couldn't a, tell the pictures. I just saw the white fence in the front. Okay. Oh Sorry. yeah, you might be seeing the uh, one of our neighbors up a couple houses up has like a big white panel fence. That might be what you're seeing. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So basically, what they're saying is where it is now is the least it's best intrusive. Okay. Yeah, location. that's what we have a permit for, to also to keep the trailer on the side of the house from yeah. the one in 2019. Right. Yeah. And I think we we touched on the snowmobile trailer during that application, but we weren't addressing it because only one one thing at a time, like you go. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so so actually that snowmobile trailer was also part of the approval. However, that was also not supposed to be forward of the house. And that's the issue um, okay. that the zoning enforcement officer cited them for. OK. I thought it was, I thought that application was strictly for the RV. Okay. 
No, they did get approval for both the RV and the snowmobile trailer. It's just the location of the trailer on the driveway. Okay. And 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 like I said, I, I, that's our fault, you know. And I, be, the trailer has been here since, um, like I said, since we moved in, and and it's it's not my goal to get away without pulling a permit for it. If we need to pull a permit for it, I just didn't, I didn't know that we needed a permit for the small trailer. We learned that we needed a, a permit for the camper, uh, which is what we addressed. I didn't realize that we needed a separate permit to keep the, tr the snowmobile trailer in the driveway because it's, it's been there since 2014. I didn't think it was a problem in, until recently, to be honest with you. Or I, I would oh, have also, that. Ryan, just to note, um, while this uh, application is the result of a um, order issued by the zoning enforcement officer, uh, for the record, uh, three neighbors have submitted letters of support. Correct. Oh. Yeah. If you want, I can I can go through those. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, to, to bring into the record, we do have three letters of support. Uh, I have an email here from Catherine Rosania. Uh, who is in favor, two boys live across the street, so they live at Six Crest. Um, received your they, letter, positive review. They would have direct view of it, just, just for an FYI. They are sort of just diagonal across from us on the same street, so they would have view, they do have view of it. Down the street? Yeah, they're down, kind of just downgrade. across and one down, so uh -huh. they have sort of direct view of it, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another letter of support. We have an email from Judy Williams saying, I don't care if you park your trailer in the driveway. That is the <laughs> gist of it. They and are have, directly next to us. They, we share a property line with them. So they are another direct neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I also have a lengthy email from Michelle Lavoie, 16 Westwood Drive. Uh, very positive review, speaking highly of them being very neighborly. Um, and uh, so they're applauding them just basically on their, their yard and the way they keep their, the rest of their property. Um, very positive review. And that's about the gist of that. I don't know if, if you want me to read that entire email. <laughs> There is one more letter um, right submitted it. from Josh and Diana Tryon from 42 Crest Street, also in support. Okay, I must have missed that one. Apologies. Thanks, Josh. They are they are also on Crest, just a few houses up. Yeah. And Michelle um, is uh, directly behind us. We also share a property line, so she would see it as well. Understood. These are all direct neighbors. Just to clarify. Okay. Uh, while we're in the mood to get the take of the town, uh, if there's anybody, any members of the public that wish to add some comments, now would be the time. Either raise your hand virtually or start talking. A couple phone numbers down below. I'm not sure. I want to make sure that they're not just away. So we got a 838 number and a 296 number. Going once, going twice. Now, if, they, if anybody wants to chime in, we'll of course give them time. Cindy, I don't suppose you're here for this meeting, for this application. Uh, Ryan, Cindy is our new recording secretary. Hi, Cindy. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. All right. Welcome, Cindy. Make a so, motion. We're way too early. Um, I think I'm ready to entertain a motion. Um, yeah, I'll make a motion to close. Second, George. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question here? Uh, this we approved two years ago. Is it Does it come up every two years or is this a different issue from the camper and that's why it's here? There was no um, expiration on the previous approval. There was no. Right, so there was, there was no time that they had to come back. This was 
the understanding was that all recreational vehicles would be behind the house. Um, and since that's not the case, uh, that's why we're seeing it again. Behind the front of the house. Behind the right? front face of the house, correct. Yeah. yeah. I, I would propose that this, this uh, if this were to be approved, it would run in the same fashion so they don't have to keep coming back. That's, That's the way I would feel, Mr. Chairman, too. I, it, I agree with that. I would make the motion, but I don't have the right. document. It's on my phone in front of me, so I don't have the number. I, I agree with that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And, uh, can I just ask a question about... Thank uh, you. Uh, didn't we approve, I can't remember now, recently uh, someone came to us about placing a boat, was it, in the front yard? Is that on, was that on Crest Street somewhere? Did somebody um, know any of that, that application? That wasn't that long ago, right? A few months ago. I believe back. that was last fall. Yeah, where, where is that house relative to you? I mean, I'm just trying to picture where just, that is. Just a few houses up across the street, yeah. Yeah, so I, I know that they came, uh, a couple wanting to keep their boat during the boating season, and, and otherwise they would put it somewhere else. I forgot exactly where. Well, yeah. they they cram it in their garage. Yeah. Actually, they had to <laughs> they modify. Yeah. Part, they partially yeah. disassemble the boat and they put it in their garage. Yeah, yeah. I think we we had that conversation. I I kept on in my head when I was looking at this application, confusing the two, just because they were relatively similar. So yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to draw comparisons here in my head. Uh, Okay, I, I do remember that they were gonna to try to put it in the garage. So I'm glad they're able to do that. But you said it's impossible at all to put this in the garage. It's, it's nothing too tall. Unfortunately, okay. our, it's, not, it's not a length uh, issue actually. Um, issue. Yeah, it's a width and height, uh, height issue. Um, if, if it was short enough and not so wide, I would be able to get it in the garage. Cause I do, it's, it is, we only have a single bay, but yeah. it is long enough. Um, Cause it's, the trailer's only 10 feet. Um, but it's a height so that the clamshell, the way it's, it, it's a, I don't know if you have the pictures there, but it's, it's basically a, it's an enclosure and that enclosure will not clear the, the garage, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Understand. Yeah. So either, either way, the, say yeah. again. Oh, go ahead. I was going to make a motion. Go ahead. I want you to make just, a motion. Let me just, let me just finish my thought here and, and it, it's, it's clear to me, and I want to make sure I understand right, that you're asking for this just for the winter months, correct? Yeah, because in the in the sum, it's it's in my, you know, it's we don't obviously use the snowmobiles in the summer. So um the trailer can then go in the backyard sort of when, you know, when it's not quite as muddy. So we did put in there from December to April. Um, you know, I guess. I'd hate to be pushed to throw it back there when it's like mud season, I guess. Maybe I should clarify that. So um, the end of April. So, sort of, you know, as soon as my yard dries up, I can put it back there because we're not using it anymore. Right. So that's that's really the only times it's been in the driveway. Um, actually, that's not true. Some some years it's been in the driveway, um, but it's just it's never been an issue um, and we've never had a complaint on it. Um, but as I said, just as recent, so, you know, I don't have a problem putting it in the backyard. It, it's out of my way. We started doing that last year. Um, but yes, so really it's going to be in the driveway for the winter months, you know, which is typically, you know, from Thanksgiving, you know, and sometimes later, uh, because it, we typically don't get out till December, but I do have to pull the trailer forward and do maintenance on the snowmobiles and stuff like that. So I try to pull it out, you know, by November, like around Thanksgiving, and then it's it's in the driveway from that point on. I'm just trying to avoid uh, a future issue. I'm thinking April is going to be wet. Exactly what I was thinking. I, I, you know, so as so, we so talk I, about so this, I'm wondering, I, why you, I'm wondering why you asked for that. Yeah, we, we can't we can't make a motion that says when your yard dries up. That's that's yeah. No, I, I get it. I, I understand that. So um, if, if yeah. we approve April, you're, you're sure going to be constrained to push that back there, wet or not. You have yeah. to understand that, right? So they can, I do. We okay. can motion. Uh, the hearing is closed, but if we want to entertain, I got a motion for you, Ryan. Giving giving hard months, that's on us. And if it's wet, 
they throw down some plywood and wheel it back. That's that's just the nature of having a recreational vehicle. So yep. I think we stick to, and I don't know, Jim, what you were thinking, but I say we stick to the December to April. Yeah, I would, I would, uh, I would make a motion to approve application 3008-21-Z. And I would, the, the uh, window, I would put December 1st to the last day of April. Second, George. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any opposed? Abstentions? All right. Congratulations. I have a quick question. Uh, Mitt, yes, and Mr. Chair, I have uh, a, a request. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Tom go ahead, Tony. I, I Tony, would Tony, uh, request that the uh, commission uh, direct uh, uh, the town planning office to uh, uh, you know, provide the applicants with a copy of the uh, resolution that we've just adopted or the approval, uh, giving them uh, as precise as language as uh, we can supply as to the wording of the permit that uh, this commission has just uh, granted so that uh, the applicants will uh, have a better idea of what they can do and and not do with respect to compliance with a permit. Uh, uh, they've indicated some uh, issues with regards to understanding what their uh, rights and privileges and duties are with respect to the uh, their their previous approval. And I would hope to avoid uh, uh, such confusion in the future on on their part. Uh, the, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Tony? Uh, yep. Question for Denise. Does this follow the property, Denise? I'm sorry, what was the question? Does this follow the park property? If, if the applicant sells their home, does okay. this approval stay with the property? Yes, the, the approval inherently uh, runs with the land. However, it's very specific to that <laughs> Um, snowmobile trailer and to the location and now to the time frame that you've assigned. Good. Thanks for clarifying. Hey, hey Ryan, Ryan David Drake, I asked Denise another question like what Tony was saying. Is it specific for this trailer? Yes. Yes. Okay, so well, not a trailer, this trailer. It is specific for this trailer. So if they sell this and buy a new one, they really need to come back and have us take another look. That's correct. Right. So if they sell the house, the house has to get the trailer with it or else they can't do it. <laughs> Essentially. Okay. Fair enough. With the housing market the way it is, I, that would probably be okay. No, I understand. You know, the only reason I my thought is if you went out and say a year or two and bought another one, a new one, it'd be worth it to take another look to see if you could buy a trailer that would maybe fit in the garage. <laughs> so hmm. you wouldn't have to deal with it. But anyways, that's that fine. That would probably stop me from buying another trailer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Even better. All right. So that one is closed. Chairman Roberts, you are here. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Have fun. Right, Mark. Yes, I am here. Hi, Reg. Hey. With that, I can I can keep it up. Uh, or I can at least read this while you're getting yourself situated. Uh, moving on to item 3.3, public hearing 3011-22Z, JPL Transportation seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.3 of, of the Weathersfield regulations to park a box truck at 61 Arrow Road. Do we have anyone here on behalf of the applicant? Yes or no? Uh, hi, my name is John, JPL. Hi. Here you are. Ready to hear your application when you are. So John, if you wanted to just give a brief description of your proposal. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's a bus truck, 26 feet, and also it's in the lower parking lot in the 61 Air Road 
in in the building. Uh, as they say, it's the lower parking lot. We usually use the truck at night. So we usually start between 10 and 12, uh, between 11 and midnight. And we return around like um, 10 a.m. every day. Sunday, no, Monday, Monday to Saturday or Monday to Sunday, depends on of the of the routes of the, bueno, uh, you know, what kind of world we, we find, what kind of laws we, we find. Uh, it's just one box truck and it's in the last coral at the end of the, you know, the lower parking lot. What kind of, what kind of make a model truck? How many foot? 26. 20, it was like international or Freightliner? No, it's a Freightliner M2106. All right. Are you, I see a, an image of a seven by seven proposed shed being pointed at where I'm assuming is where you want your box truck? Yes. Yes, it's in the corner in, uh, as you say, lower parking lot in that building. And that's the, the, the curb stop or the, the line where everybody parks now, that is the limit of the bituminous and you'd be parking this on gravel? Yes. Uh, Rich, I have a question for you, Rich. Yep. Uh, going back to his previous uh, applications, Denise, you might be able to help out. I believe there were uh, parameters of fueling and repairing, et cetera, of his other vehicles uh, that he parks there, correct? Of what he can and can't do and when he can and when he can and can't do it and what he can and can't do. I believe there were parameters put on his last parking application? Uh, yes, uh, the application that was approved in January of 2021 um, included 10, con or I'm sorry, nine conditions, including um, um, management protocols and uh, time frames of operation. Uh, my understanding, John, though, is that uh, the majority of those vehicles are no longer parked on site No, yes, the, the, the truck is going to be between, it's going to be in the parking lot between like 10, 11 a.m. every day until almost midnight, around like 11, 12, around, around, that, around that time. Now, I think the question was whether the trucks that you had the approval for from a year ago are parked on site or not. I uh, know that, but that approval was for, for, for day cabs, for trucks, but I already moved those trucks to another parking in Berlin. So it's a different, it's a different kind of trucks. So how, so you're just looking, so you got rid of all your tractors. They don't, they no longer park there. You just want to park this one straight job. Yes. Yes. Just one box truck. One straight truck. Yes. And are you going to fuel it on site or is it going to be off site fueled? No, on site. On site. Oh, off site. So you just go roadside mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay. What about maintenance on that truck? Is this the same as the other one? It's a lease truck. So it gets all repaired. It, all the maintenance is done at the lease facility. No, yes. All the maintenance is in, in, in Freyla, in Gabrieli or Freyliner of Hartford. So it's not in the place. Okay. Got it. This is George. You don't anticipate any other request like this, like this truck in the future? No, I don't think so, no, so far, no. Okay, thank you. Hey, Denise, David, why does he even need a permit? He's already permitted for up to 10, just because the truck's different. Uh, the, application, different? the application that he received in January, 2021 expires in January, in, in January uh, okay. 2022, okay. Okay. for one year. Yeah, and it was in a different place though too. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was how many paved up and back, right? Yeah. How many power units was he approved for? Like fifteen or something? Like that? I can't remember. Ten. 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 But, so he's going. So, so he's losing nine units. Okay. Yep. Got it. 
So Denise, the only reason we're listening to this application is because it's expiring then? Yes. All right, it's, it's a date issue. Not, and not... I mean, essentially he's um, reducing the request. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's really reducing the request. So mm -hmm. he's got to do it because it, it's running Let's out go. of time. I get it. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm good right now. Yep. Okay. All right, anybody else on the commission have questions for the applicant? If is not, there are there any? I, yep. just, I just have one quick question. Where were the 10, when you did have them, where were those 10 trucks parked? Uh, it's because I get another parking lot, a big parking lot. Uh, it's almost in that parking lot, I have a maintenance directly from Amerit, it's an, a third party company, and also, um, it's, it's close to the Burlington Pike, um, and it's, um, it's, it's basically is 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 way more big area, so is and is is full with pavement all the stuff. So it is 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 very, is it basically is is because it's a bigger space, and now I have fourteen trucks, so that's why I need, I, I had to move because I I get more trucks. Okay. All right. Um, are there any members of the public that have any questions or comments on this application? Any members of the public? All right. If not, um, back to the commission and the applicant. I guess the, the one question I had was whether we wanted to continue any of the conditions from the prior approval, you know, such as no vehicle repair or maintenance, no vehicle fueling application valid for one year, um, or, or anything else that is relevant to this minor or reduced application. I don't know, do you is have it, any thoughts on that, Denise? This isn't a reduced application. We're just extending it, right? So we just extend it. It's a reduced version of it. So no, no, no he's not, asking, we, but we're not. He, he's not asking for reduced version, is he? He he just mentioned he's going to reduce it, but why do we even bother? Just extend it. So in terms of the approval, um, you know, if you prefer, I would continue those nine conditions, except I would modify number three to say maximum one box right. truck um and then you know depending on um i would eliminate condition number nine the storage shed um and then depending on uh the feeling of the commission in terms of um whether or not they want the approval to be valid for one year um that that's really the only other one in question I think my opinion well, on that is to eliminate nine and seven. And then if he wants to bring more than the one truck that we're gonna to approve today, then he comes back. I, Ryan, I would also think that we should, you know, he's come back, we've had no, Denise, there's been no complaints or anything of his. There's been yeah. no complaints. So I think, you know, the guy's running a business this is time, it's money for him. I think, you know, being reasonable, he's been a good citizen and he has reduced his, Used dramatically, I think. I think a two or three year would be reasonable for this guy to make him come three, back. Jim. Is, is I think three I, years is very reasonable. Make make it three, Jim, because I agree with you that we don't yeah. need to have him coming back here every yeah. year. Yeah, no. it, it you know, and, and then um, exactly, and I'd be happy if the guy comes back and wants to park more trucks because business is good. So. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in favor of what Ryan said. He's only got one truck. Why, why do we want to put any time on it? If, if he's going to expand operations at any time, uh, he's got to come back to us anyways, and we'll just reevaluate. I'm, I'm in favor of no time limit in one truck. I think you said nine and seven, right? To be removed. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of that. I think that's the right way to do this. I think you're is, right. Is this Good point. Is a storage shed part of this application? No, no. 
All right, then we can take eight out then too, right? That's oh. right, Rich. Well, I mean, the storage shed is still there. No, 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 no. Actually, I never use it. <laughs> oh, it was never there? So that's no. the seven by seven storage shed is basically, okay. Yes, I, I never I never use, use the shed. Right. I have no problem if you want to go uh, unlimited, you know, no time limit or five years on whichever the commission wants to do, I'm for. No, no time limit, Jim. Okay, fine, George. George shows up. You, if you want to make a motion, I'll. Uh... <laughs> well, I'll make a motion to approve. Hearing, it? Is, well, excuse me, have close the hearing first. Yeah, we, have, we have a lot of. I'm sorry, I have I'll a question. Make a motion to. Uh, wait, hold on, hold John. Hold the applicant has a question. Mm. Oh. Yes, please. I have a question, just in case, because now the market is so hard to find another uh, another street truck, but uh, because it's expensive and because basically it's, it's very difficult to find a, a good truck because the chips, because the shortage, all the stuff. But maybe uh, if I can get another truck, so I need to do this this uh, request again, the app applicant again. Or maybe I can I can change. It's not now because I can find anything. I was looking for another truck, but it's, it's very difficult. But maybe in a month or two months or three months, I if I get one, uh, should I do the process now? Or maybe I can get so, a pool. I don't know if I can get a pool for at least for three. But John, you can you would have to seek a modification to this application um, and provide us the specs for that specific vehicle. Um, but what I can um, add as part of the previous conditions is that if you have to come before the commission, if the commission is favorable, um, we can waive the fees for the application. Okay. Okay, that, that sounds good to me, Denise. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. I understand his uh, struggle trying to find equipment. Hey, right now the, the list at number three says it can have ten trucks. We want to take that out. Yeah, yeah. It's What's gonna, for? Why would why would we take it out? It's, it's going to say anybody. It's going to say one unlimited time. That's, yeah, but, that's the compromise. So maybe we can compromise and say three unlimited time. I mean, again, the guy he's never been a hassle. So you say three unlimited time, and it's then it's not. Well, I mean, three's never been an issue. Not, I mean, I'm, I'm with you, but it's not been an issue. So you know. But well, they'd I mean, have to be the would... same. They'd have to be the same trucks. Yeah, whatever. My point is, the guy gets a good deal on a truck. He needs a place to park it for a while, and he, we can't let him park it there. I, don't I know. think if you, I think if you give him up to a twenty-six foot box truck, uh, Dave, that's fine. So the guy okay. comes with a sixteen foot of Zuzu. It's not a problem. It's twenty-six foot okay. is pretty much an industry standard. Because yep. you know. Yeah, I mean, in, in the, in but the I'm with you. But we're looking to change one. three to one. That's all. Correct. You know, I'm with you, Dave. Three to one. Okay. Dave, I'm I'm for you on that, and it sounds reasonable because the guy, he's got to snap a truck when he can get it. He cannot wait. He's yeah. got to buy it as soon as he sees. It, he's got to pull the trigger. Yeah. So I was well, saying, we, why don't we just change item three to like maximum of three trucks? Give the guy a break. You know, it's a, you know, it's not that yeah. big a deal. Well, it's be, it, it, it's not because this application is not for a re renewal of the prior application. It's an application for a new approval for one truck. So we can't change that, that's something. Not what, that's, that, that's, that's not what Denise said. She said it was, a, it was to just extend it. That's how we started. I mean, the, the trigger for them submitting the application was that their previous application had expired. Right, so we can just extend it. That's the point. But nobody. But we want to give them a longer extension. So let's just change item three to like maximum of three trucks and get rid of nine and eight, I guess. Then go on for let them go on forever. Well, five years or something like that. I I, I think we're the trying application, to... however, was advertised specifically for one box truck, which is okay. the request the applicant made. Okay, fair enough. Okay, at least he knows our sentiments now. It... And it, and it was not an application to extend the prior approval, which was right. in a different place. Okay. At least he knows when he comes back, he'll get his three trucks if he needs them. I got you, Rich. You're, you're very clear. Thank you. Appreciate it. What, what I understood okay. from this applicant is that 
He's looking for one right now, but he wants to make it easy to get more. And, and I think we have done that, right? We, we told him that there's no fee if he comes back and we've given him no time frame. So we're making it easy for him. Yeah. yeah. At least he knows where we're coming from. Yeah, I think so. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I'd I'll, I'll like um, to make a motion to close the, the public hearing second. on this. Uh, second by George. All right. Motion motion by Peter, second by Jim and George to uh, close the public hearing. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I, ma I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve. Oh, three oh one one two two Z JPL transportation. I'll, I'll second your motion, George, but I want to make sure we get the conditions correct here, right? So yes, uh, we're going to drop items. Uh, Let's separately. do them new. Let's do them new because it's a new. Okay, that's fine. So, so it would be uh, condition one would stay, right? No vehicle repair. Uh, no Jake break, uh, maximum of one truck permitted on site, uh, no trailers permitted on site, uh, fuel split management protocol to be in place, uh, no vehicle fueling allowed between the hours of 8 and 7 a.m., and that's it. I would also just add that the application fee will be waived if the applicant seeks yeah. a modification. Yeah. yeah, good point. Forgot that. I agree. And do we have to do we have to explicitly say that there's no time limit or is it implied? It's implied. No, it's implicit. I would also say that the, the one truck is the up to 26 foot box truck that he's applied okay. for. Correct. Yeah. Item three. That work for you, George? Yes. Okay, here, second okay. on that. Yep. Yep. All right. Any further discussion? And I guess just so that we are clear on who's voting, um, what were there? Eight regular members and three alternates. Um, oh, I screwed that up, didn't so, I? Well, we'll live. Um, <laughs> for this one, not going to look all, good. This is going to look good you on your resume. Well. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, really, this is going on your permanent record, Ryan. Mm. Um, Put them on double yeah, secret probation. Yeah, I will, I will, um, I'll seat uh, alternate Lembruni on this application since he made the motion or seconded it. Um, any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, aye. Opposed? abstentions. All right, motion carries. Thank you. All right, next item, application well, Thank you so item 3.4. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item 3.4, public hearing 3012-22Z. Leonardo Gugliotti seeking special permit in accordance with section 5.6. Uh, exceptions for business redevelopment of the Weathersfield zoning regulations for a change of use from retail to a cosmetology school at 657 uh, Silestine Highway. And there's someone here on behalf of the applicant who would like to make a presentation. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. For the record, uh, my name is Peter Alter. I'm a lawyer representing the applicant owner from the firm of Alter and Pearson and Glastonbury. Also speaking on behalf of the applicant tonight will be Kevin Johnson from Close Jensen and Miller. Uh, representatives of the applicant are also uh, on this um, virtual meeting and they may respond to questions if there are some that are operational in nature. As the call for the public hearing indicates, this is an application made under section 5.6 of your regulations for the renovation of the building at 657 Silestine Highway, uh, located in the town center zone. Um, as an educational institution, it is a permitted use 
by special permit in the zone. Um, we did already file with Denise's office uh, evidence of the mail notice as required. And also I will represent to the commission that sign was properly posted at the property for the appropriate period. Um, can Kevin have uh, the opportunity to put some materials up on the screen? Yes, you are able to share. Thank you, Thank you. Denise. Okay, good. It says uh, disabled. Yeah, I don't okay. have any authority here. Yeah, here we go. This uh, site, for those of you who have been around Weathersfield uh, for a time, will recall that it was uh, first a Pelton drug and then a Rite Aid drugstore pharmacy. Uh, and this is a photo that uh, we had from some archives just to remind people of uh, the the positioning and the appearance of uh, the building as it was a Rite Aid pharmacy latest. Um, so, you know, the Rite Aid pharmacy has been closed for some time. Uh, you can go to the next one, Kevin, please. This is a view of the building as it exists today, uh, taken from obviously from the Silestine Highway. Um, the site has been uh, really fully paved, as you can see, um, about 83% of the site is impervious at the present time. Under your town center regulation, um, it is allowed up to 100% impervious. Um, and I, I would have to say that this lot represents uh, about the most paving of any property that uh, you could imagine along the Celestine Highway. Um, Kevin will go over the changes to the landscape plan uh, that have been made, which uh, decreases the impervious surface by uh, some amount of landscaping. And he'll, he'll review that with you shortly. The lot um, was created by dividing off from uh, the parcel immediately to the south. And it now consists of about 2.3 acres or 100,000. 209 square feet would be the parcel on the right as, as you're looking at the, the existing conditions plan. Um, it has 277 feet of frontage on the Silestine Highway. The Gugliotti family proposes to do a complete redevelopment of the existing building um, to make it into a facility for uh, its business, the International Institute of Cosmetology. Um, that business is currently located uh, across on the other side of the Silestine Highway at 632 uh, and occupies about 6,900 square feet in that facility. Uh, if this application is approved, the uh, Gugliotti family will be able to make use of approximately 14,000 square feet, doubling uh, the space that they currently have avail available. But not only will it be much larger space, it'll be uh, more completely developed to be uh, more efficient so that students can be uh, trained and dealt with in a much more efficient way. Um, right now, the maximum number of students that uh, they can have in their current facility is about 75. Uh, with this facility, they'll be able to handle 90 students at any one session, uh, greatly enhancing their ability to provide uh, this opportunity to their students. Um, for those of you who don't know what cosmetology is, it has to do with the training of uh, people to be professionals in areas of hairdressing, aesthetic or skin care, makeup and eyelash uh, treatments, as well as barbering. Um, Mr. Gugliotti 
senior opened the institute in 2002 with six students. And since then it's grown to, in its current location, taking over spaces as they became available um, and, and now is able to service uh, up to 75 students with some staggered classes. The concept for uh, the Institute is to be able to offer uh, greater opportunities for its students, in particular in light of what we've been through for the last two years. Uh, there's a need to have greater space between students and a greater uh, separation of uh, areas for training. And so the new facility is critical for them in that regard, as well as being able to handle the number of students who seek uh, to use their, their training opportunities. There are no wetlands on the site or related to the site. And uh, the plan was uh, presented to DRAC uh, and was endorsed by uh, the committee uh, after its review. Um, the Gugliotti family, as you'll see in, in Kevin's presentation, has made put a great emphasis on upgrading the appearance of the building and, and turning it into uh, a real opportunity for upgrade uh, on the Silestine Highway. Uh, they do intend to make use of the town's facade grant program uh, to help underwrite uh, the cost. Uh, as you can see when, when Kevin goes through the architecture that they've made a real commitment to tremendously enhancing uh, this property. Family has made a major financial commitment to the site and to improving and expanding its business. Um, it represents an opportunity for a local business which has been successful to continue to grow and to stay in Weathersfield uh, as a real asset on, on the Silestine Highway. Um, we are still part of an integrated parcel. Uh, the piece to the south uh, shares uh, some declarations and uh, connections, physical connections, as well as reciprocal easements uh, for ingress, egress, and some cross parking. And so that had to be taken into account uh, as close Jensen and Miller developed its plan. Um, what Kevin will do is go through uh, the site plan uh, for you in greater detail. He'll review the landscaping and building plans and speak to uh, some of the concerns that were raised by staff in their memos uh, as he makes his presentation. Uh, and then we'll come back and review some of the outstanding items uh, to conclude our presentation. So Kevin, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Walter. Uh, for the record, Kevin Johnson, Close Jensen and Miller. Uh, just a quick orientation uh, with the site plan. Uh, again, I think you're all familiar uh, with this plan. Uh, we, we appeared before you uh, just about a year ago or so for a resubdivision. Uh, so this parcel uh, is located at the northwest quadrant of uh, Wells Road and Silas Dean Highway. Wells Road being to the left, Silas Dean Highway being to the bottom of the sheet. Uh, direction north is to the right. Uh, two access points to the site uh, from Silas Dean Highway, uh, as Attorney Alter uh, mentioned, um, this site does share access and parking, and there are cross parking uh, agreements and so forth uh, with the abutting parcel to the south, uh, number 675-687, uh, Silas Dean Highway. Uh, so I'm just going to shift the next sheet. So um, we, we did meet uh, virtually with staff. Uh, they did ask for some uh, improvements to the site. Uh, as Attorney Alter mentioned, uh, this is in a town center zone, 100% uh, impervious uh, coverage is allowed. Um, staff did ask for us to increase, uh, provide some landscaping. Uh, we did incorporate uh, two landscaped islands on the north side of the building. Uh, currently, that is just paved. Uh, we also 
tried to redefine uh, the, the, the edge treatment uh, along the north property line. Uh, currently, uh, there's uh, the edge of the paving is almost coincident with the abutting uh, property, uh, which is Savage uh, Road Park owned by the town of Weathersfield. Uh, what we tried to do was uh, to put a nice soft radius in there, picking up on the existing driveway apron that's there at the Silas Dean. And, and basically directing the traffic, uh, you know, from front to rear, uh, 30 foot wide uh, aisle. Uh, and it resulted in uh, increasing the green space. Uh, there is an existing uh, multi-stem tree uh, uh, that we're proposing to preserve. Uh, so this additional green will hopefully help uh, that tree as well. Um, we did, uh, restripe uh, by cutting in these landscaped islands. Uh, we did lose a couple parking spaces. Uh, we did restripe across the frontage. We relocated handicap parking from the two sides of the building to the front, uh, put some crosswalks in there, uh, and included the appropriate number of handicap spaces as well. Uh, in the rear, of the property, uh, there are existing dumpsters currently. Uh, there's no screening around those dumpsters. Uh, we did propose to include a dumpster enclosure uh, around that. Um, in terms of parking uh, on site today, uh, I believe there's 115 parking spaces. Uh, as Attorney Walter mentioned, uh, the school has grown over the last 20 years or so. Uh, that it, it is anticipated it's going to grow uh, some more. Uh, the Gugliottis uh, anticipate 90 students, 10 staff, uh, and 10 clients at any one time, which requires 110 uh, parking spaces. Um, there's also, a, uh, as part of the cross parking uh, agreement with the abutting property, um, there, there are six uh, that they are obligated to share with next door. So there's a total parking requirement of 116 uh, parking spaces. Uh, and, and that's what uh, we're proposing. So one more than what's existing. Um, again, by zoning, uh, th there is no uh, requirement in the regulations for the required amount of Parking for a school, uh, that's to be determined by the commission. Uh, I believe it was in the staff memo. Um, you know, reference was made to the, the recent application for uh, Porter and Chester uh, at 1210 Silas Dean Highway. Uh, similar uh, condition. I'm going to move on to the architectural plan. Uh, not an architect, but I'll do my best to describe this. And uh, so as you can see, uh, you know, from the photo that was on the screen earlier uh, to what's being proposed is a drastic difference. Um, basically, the entire uh, front facade is going to be redone. Uh, a whole new treatment uh, that the existing glass is going to be retained. They're going to redo the aluminum framework, uh, colorize that. Uh, they're incorporating uh, prefabricated aluminum panels uh, made to mimic redwood. Uh, there's new canopies. Uh, the existing canopy is going to be brought, you know, taken down. Uh, basically, there's two separate canopies. There's uh, where the cursor is right now uh, is one unit, and then the other is on the right. Uh, there's going to be new doors installed. Uh, doorways basically remain in the center of the building. Uh, and there is signage proposed uh, for the top of uh, basically an extension uh, to the parapet. Uh, um, so moving on, this is the floor plan. Uh, again, the bottom of the screen is, is the parking area, uh, the main door in the center, um, come into a reception lobby area, uh, classrooms off to the right, 
uh, studios and other rooms uh, to the left. Uh, exit doors on either side will remain. Um, as Attorney Alter mentioned, um, this plan was brought uh, before DRAC and, and received endorsement from DRAC. Uh, moving on, these are some construction details, some elements uh, developed by the architects. Um, not going to get too deep into that, but that was included in the application uh, package. And it does, you know, refer to the wood clad overhang aluminum canopy and details, uh, prefabricated aluminum uh, panels and so forth. Uh, moving on. Uh, actually, I, I, uh, I think I skipped the sheet. Um, actually, there was a letter. Uh, sorry about that. There was a letter included with your uh, information package. Um, you uh, are familiar with uh, my my request for waivers for many sites uh, over the years. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't structure this as a waiver letter. Um, <laughs> basically, it's more of a statement. Um, again, because the regulations do allow for up to 100% impervious coverage. Um, basically, what this letter is, is a, uh, you know, a statement of uh, or a summary of the landscape requirements uh, and what was provided. And again, it wasn't meant to be a waiver request. Uh, I, I could go through if you want me to go through each item. Um, I don't know if you want take that time. Um, basically, we are reducing the impervious uh, coverage and increasing the pervious, um, adding trees uh, and such. So now moving on. Um, so we received uh, staff comments uh, yesterday uh, from engineering and planning. Um, we did in, try to incorporate those comments on a plan. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have time to resubmit to staff, so they have not seen this plan. Um, we tried to be responsive. Um, basically, uh, again, those two islands on the north side of the building will remain. Uh, we did add two more islands in the front as requested. Uh, there'll be uh, bituminous curved islands, uh, two trees in each island. Uh, we did narrow up uh, one of the drive aisles in the front. It was also requested by staff to uh, try and increase the green space in the front uh, between that drive aisle and the property line. Uh, there was also a request uh, to include uh, some LID features on site. Uh, I believe it was the town engineer's comment that suggested perhaps some type of infiltration along the frontage. Uh, what we did was to create about a three foot wide, three foot deep uh, trench with stone. Uh, basically the front of that site, I'm, I'm, I'm not prepared to say that the entire front of the site will drain there. Uh, part of the site drains to the sides of the building. Uh, there is drainage uh, in the rear of the site, and then it's the pipe system that comes out to the Silas Dean. But there is at least a portion of that parking area which is going to drain towards that uh, proposed infiltration trench. Um, there was a request um, for a detail to be added to the plans for the dumpster enclosure. Uh, we included that on the plan. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, that's right there, and then that's a detail for the infiltration trench as well. Uh, we did incorporate uh, corrections to some notations on the plan, um, minor, minor things, uh, references to the tax map, uh, adding uh, bituminous concrete labels, uh, taking a, a label off for a proposed property line, which was a carryover from last year. Um, the Gugliottis uh, have authorized us to at least do some survey to confirm uh, spot grades and uh, 
topographic grades. Uh, that was another request by staff. Um, there was a request also by staff, by the town engineer, um, the northerly driveway that I mentioned where we created that soft radius to direct the traffic to the rear and, that, and, and create that green space. Uh, he, he was asking uh, for us to leave a portion, if we understood the comment right, leave a portion of that pavement so that you can come straight in and then um, create some type of angled uh, transition, uh, I guess, to be determined. Again, we didn't have sufficient time to reach out to him. Um, we feel what we're proposing is a better solution. We feel it channels the traffic. It's more defined. Uh, does add more green space. Um, if we were going to leave that paving um, on that north property line, again, it, as I mentioned, it's basically coincident with that north property line. Um, so then we may not have the five foot landscape minimum uh, by zoning. So we, we just feel, I mean, again, we'd be happy to uh, discuss uh, with Mr. Greger, um, but we just feel that this is more defining and a, and a better uh, alignment. Uh, it was also uh, requested, suggested uh, that we look at narrowing some of the other uh, drive aisles on site. Uh, some of those are 30 feet. Uh, some might be in the rear in excess of 30 feet. I think the reason it's the width that it is, is the former use of that building and for delivery vehicles and service area to the rear. Um, we're, we're not looking to rebuild this entire parking lot. Um, I think narrowing some of those drive aisles would also, um, you know, have to look at circulation for fire apparatus and so forth to make sure that's sufficient. Um, with the drive aisles we do have today, we did put uh, turning templates on there um, in an SU-30, uh, basically an equivalent to a fire truck can make it around those corners. Um, the fire marshal did review the plans uh, for fire access and so forth, um, and he did not have any uh, comments. Um, so I think at this point, um, that summarizes my comments at this point, and I'll turn it back to Attorney Alter for some further discussion. Kevin, Kevin, could I ask you one quick question first? Sure. Um, no, I think I, I like this, but I, I just wanted to be sure that I understood the conversation about the North Driveway and what what the town engineer was looking for that differs from what you have shown here? Was it basically to remove the, the green space so that people could go straight in the driveway there? I believe by the comment um, that that's what he was requesting. Okay. Um, I mean, the I only people that go in there are police cars and people cutting the corner at the light. I was just thinking that maybe it's like the EMS and police parking that he was concerned with. Uh, I, I, I can read the comment. Um, the limits and angle of proposed pavement removal near the northern driveway entrance may be difficult for vehicles to navigate. Therefore, I recommend retaining more of the pavement along the northerly property line to allow vehicles to drive straight into the site with a transition to a narrower aisle width located further to the west. The loss in new pervious surface in this area can be replaced elsewhere on the site as noted above, and that references perhaps narrowing of aisles elsewhere on the property. So again, it's not um, you know, explicit, you know, a length of straight in that he's looking for pavement retainage. Um, but again, we just felt that based on the angle of that driveway apron uh, that exists right there, that the angle of that, this, the extension, the soft radius that we created 
basically channels vehicles down that drive aisle towards the rear of the property or to make a left into the parking in the front. We, we just felt that coming straight in and then some type of transition might be more confusing for, you know, vehicular traffic. But I, again, um, you know, we're, we didn't uh, have time today to reach out to Mr. Greger. We, we tried to revise plans as much as we could and, uh, you know, for this hearing this evening, incorporate as much as possible. But again, we just think what we proposed originally is a better solution. I can see, I, I see your point about maybe a, a southbound vehicle turning right into there, but a northbound vehicle turning left into there has to take, you know, a, a hundred degree turn in order to get in onto that bearing. So I, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's something he's looking into is is both directions where if somebody misses that first driveway, sometimes that queue gets so long that you have to go to the next one to the north. Um, so I wonder if maybe he's maybe he's thinking of it from the perspective of a northbound vehicle turning left, especially like an SU three uh, SU thirty or you know a box truck something similar to that. All right. Well, again, no, it, it's but it's. Uh, we're checking everything. All right. Okay. Yep. The um, I, I did want to just remind the commission that this is an application under section five point six, um, which offers the commission a, a great deal more flexibility in terms of the manner in which it uh, applies its regulations. The, the regulation says that um, it, the commission can uh, or does not necessarily have to require that it comply with the strict application of regulations um, provided certain standards are met. And, and I think in this case, uh, those standards are met so that um, to Kevin's point of his extensive analysis of why uh, we're just not able to meet all of the requirements that we could if if this were a brand new development on a on a bare piece of property um we think we've come a long way toward addressing the staff's issues uh, really there were only two that we weren't able to accommodate one is this turning radius and frankly um I guess reasonable minds can disagree, and uh, it, it may be one that um, the commission could simply say that, uh, you know, if you saw fit to approve this application, that uh, the applicant and the town engineer meet to resolve any issues on that that access driveway. The the more significant request that we just simply can't meet is the reducing the width of the drive aisles. Um, the parking lot is not in terrible shape and uh, to do to undertake what is requested really would mean redoing the entire parking lot, um, which is a lot of blacktop and a lot of uh, site work uh, that the Gugliottis really are not in a position to undertake. Um, the 30 the, the drive aisles as they exist have been on the site since before Pelton Drug was there and uh, really don't present any issues. And we think that uh, the plan that you have before you goes a long way towards creating some modest green space where none exists now. Uh, and we would ask that the commission recognize the, the lengths to which the Gugliotti family has gone to improve this site and not uh, impose the requirement of reducing the widths of those, those drive aisles. It would make uh, this project uh, significantly more difficult on a financial basis uh, for the Gugliotti family to undertake. Um, and it would cause them uh, significant uh, issues uh, in terms of being able to go forward. So we would ask that you not uh, consider that as a condition of approval. 
the um, two other matters. Kevin, could you go back to the architectural slide for a minute? The, um, thank you, the, the signage on the building, um, your, your planning consultant points out in his memo that your sign regulation um, does not permit rooftop signs. And um, we agree that that's what the regulation says. Um, he's 100% correct when he says that. Our, uh, our consultants have indicated that because this is not um, or, or is part of the parapet, they don't consider it to be a rooftop sign. And I think that that's a matter that we don't have to uh, resolve. Um, under your sign regulation, under section 5.3, point R, if I have it right, I think I do, subsection two, the commission has authority to uh, grant increases or changes to uh, the requirements of the sign regulation if they find that the sign meets the overall intent and purpose of the sign regulations and is still not in strict compliance with the regulation of this chapter, you still have authority to approve it if you think it would result in a superior design for the overall site in terms of the quality of materials, lighting, and overall coordination of the design of the sign on the site. And we think that um, the presentation that you see and the significant upgrades to the building make a sign like this appropriate. Um, it's, uh, it, it's situated so that it's visible from the Silestine Highway. Um, it, it's the only signage that we propose for the building. There is a logo in the front corner that qualifies as a sign and we certainly acknowledge that, but that's the uh, Institute's logo uh, embossed onto the panels that are uh, set on the building. So we believe that the commission can approve the sign. We don't have to get into a discussion as to whether or not it's a rooftop sign or a, a parapet sign or, or whatever it is. If you think that it's suitable for the building as you see it, uh, then I think you have the authority under section R of your sign regulations to approve it uh, as part of this special permit. And we would ask you to do that. Um, it's obvious that the Gugliotti family has gone to a lot of uh, trouble and uh, expense to have architects take uh, a building that is, is, I think we can all agree, very tired uh, and turn it into something that has a much more significant presence on the Silestine Highway with the addition of uh, the islands in the front, which we think are a good addition. Um, the Gugliottis agreed to that uh, when they were advised of it between uh, yesterday and today, uh, as well as the islands on the north side. Uh, there's a lot more uh, landscaping on the site than has ever existed, at least in my memory of um, this area on the Silestine Highway. Um, finally, uh, one of the responsibilities of the commission is to make sure that the special permit criteria under section eight of your regulations is satisfied. I'll go through those very briefly. Uh, first one is that this is a suitable location. Um, obviously, well, perhaps not obviously, but at least in our opinion, uh, this is a perfect location for the growth of the Institute uh, moving across the street uh, obviously, it's been on the other side of the Silestine for over 20 years uh, and has demonstrated that it can be successful in this location. Um, neighborhood compatibility, uh, again, we have proof that it's compatible with, with the rest of the commercial activities on the Silestine Highway. 
its hours of operation are uh, spelled out in a communication from Mr. Gugliotti. They do not operate on weekends so that uh, that residential area to the north and, and west of, of our site uh, is not gonna have a lot of activity either late at night or on the weekends. Um, so we think it's highly compatible. We presented you with a significant upgrade and uh, change in the, in the structure and the landscaping on the site from what is currently there. We showed you what it looks like currently. Uh, we have suitable access, whether or not we need to widen out the throat of uh, the access on the north driveway is, is perhaps a matter to be determined. Uh, we have 116 parking spaces, which meets our requirements of 110 spaces, plus meets the obligation of the cross parking easement for the property to the south. Overall circulation continues to be good. Um, those of you who are aware of this, and I, someone referenced the fact that there are people who use this as a cut through to avoid the light at, at the Wells Road intersection. Um, know that there is connectivity among the internal driveways for this property and the properties to the south so that that overall circulation will continue to be uh, well functioning. We have public water, public sewer. Uh, Kevin has described an enhancement to the stormwater drainage plan uh, that we've been able to accommodate in terms of the engineer's request. There is no uh, natural feature or disruption to the environment that would be caused by this development. Uh, we think the environment is enhanced by the increased landscaping and the significant improvements to the building. Uh, it is consistent with uh, public health, safety, welfare, convenience. Uh, I don't think there's any question that the value of this property is significantly enhanced by what the Gugliotti family proposes to do. Um, it is not in conflict with the purposes of your regulation or your plan of conservation and development in that an important element of your, of your plan of conservation and development is uh, focus on the Silas Dean Highway and uh, promoting and assisting local businesses uh, as they grow and, and continue to be successful. Uh, all of those goals would be met uh, by this proposal. Um, we've talked about the signage. Uh, as you can see from uh, the, the picture that we have, the elevation drawing that we have, there is under lighting uh, on the canopy to light the front of the building. And for those of you who remember, the windows on the Pelton drug or then the Rite Aid drug were all blocked up at least um, waist high, if not higher, the, the lower half of all of those windows is blocked. Um, all of that will be removed so that light from the inside of the property will spill out into the front of the building and make it a much more appealing uh, facade to the Silestine Highway uh, than currently exists. Um, the uh, Proposal uh, has appropriate handicap parking accessible to the front of the building. The entire building is handicap accessible um, as it should be. Certainly enhances community development. Um, there are no other uses like this uh, on this part of the Silestine Highway. Uh, and, and so it certainly doesn't duplicate any uh, possible conflict or, or create any conflicts with similar uses. And finally, um, taking what is currently an empty, unused building and turning it into something that will have activity and young people coming here to Weathersfield to be trained um, is really an enhancement to the community, we think. And that uh, because of its sort of business hours of operation would cause no disruption to any residential areas uh, nearby, so that we think that uh, all of the special permit criteria that you spell out in Section 8 are met uh, by the proposal that you have before you. Uh, Kevin and I are happy to answer any questions commissioners may have or respond to any comments 
from the public. And as I indicated, uh, the Gugliottis are available if there are operational questions that they might be able to answer. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Would you like me to stop sh uh, screen sharing or? Yes, yes, please. I mean, I guess if somebody comes back with a specific question, we can do it again, but at least okay. now we can see who's here. Um, anybody on the commission have any questions for uh, the applicant or uh, Kevin or Peter? Yes, Mr. Chairman George, I do. Couple. George, George, go ahead. Uh, the roof sign. Did uh, DRAC uh, approve it? Didn't, in fact, did they look at this whole proposal? DRAC, design Review Committee. The Design Review uh, Advisory Committee reviewed the proposal, including the sign, and endorsed it. Just they did. one the, the point, non though, Peter. Um, in, in their application, uh, they did not receive the specific dimensions of the proposal. Um, so they that will have to be reviewed by our zoning enforcement officer, as well as the issue of the interpretation of the roof sign. I, I um, and I, I I have a question. Another question along that sign issue: Is there anywhere else on the Silestine, and maybe Denise can answer this too, uh, where a roof sign is? is there and or permitted or recently approved by our commission? I mean, recent in the last 20 years, we'll say. Come on, Peter, you you know the town well enough. I'm Answer thinking. that quick. George, you probably remember, didn't that was a finest supermarket, right, George? That, yeah. That was, that was a grocery store. When I taught junior high school at Silas Dean Junior High, that was a grocery store. Yeah, it was the finest supermarket. It didn't have the letters on the roof. We have a sign that that we have a that that picture shows some signs up on the top. Yeah, I thought it said finest right on the roof. I mean, because we had signs on the roof before, we should allow them it to continue as an historic aspect to it. Excuse uh, me, Mr. Oikel, I'm not suggesting that we have any. Can I talk? This is Carmelo Gugliari. That sign is knowing the roof is in front of the building. And why did you say it was on the roof for your application? Because you are talking about roof sign and that one is not. Uh, Denise, yeah, do we consider that, that so a roof sign? The, our, our planning consultant, Don Caruso, is interpreting that that is a roof sign. Um, so it will have to be clarified, uh, the interpretation through the zoning enforcement officer, if, if there's a discrepancy. That, so sign, we... that sign is taking part of uh, the sign that was there before. Uh, I don't know if uh, you saw in the first picture that um, Mr., uh, Mr. Kevin put in the, in the screen, where I show there was a food mark, I think, what was there, and that is in the same level of that sign. It's not in the roof. I'm not taking issue with the sign personally. I think it's I accept, it's acceptable to me the way you presented it. And, yeah, and just I mean, to note, the, the, the design review commission was supportive of the proposal. Um, you know, they did like the look of the sign. So, you know, staff is not discouraging the applicant from. Uh, moving forward with what they're proposing, we're just seeking clarification. If, if I might, um, I don't think that the commission has to decide whether this is a roof sign or not. I think that you gave yourself the ability to approve that sign as it presented without calling it a roof sign or a, a building sign under section R of your sign regulations, where you're allowed to grant uh, changes to the location, area, height, requirements of, of the sign. So, so Peter, that is, that is correct. However, this application was not advertised to include the special permit request for the sign. I, okay. 
I, I think we're, we're proceeding under a special permit and, and certainly the sign was, was part of that app has been part of the application that will, it's up to the commission to excuse decide. me. I want to ask a question. This meeting is to give us solution or to give us a problem. Denise. I'm just providing you the staff comments. Mr. Gugliotti, we, we are in support of the proposal. Mr. Gugliotti, we need to hear from the commission. Okay. Thank you. Thank Two you. more questions, Mr. Chairman, if you want. Yeah. George. Okay. Yep. Um, let's see. Drainage. Just to, these are a couple of quick questions here. Uh, the drainage. Um, has the town engineer indicated any problems with the runoff here or anything like that? Uh, Kevin, uh, he seems to always get concerned these days with the federal requirements about uh, offsite drainage on commercial sites. Mr. Chair, yes Mr. No? Reichel, if, if I could answer part of that, because this is the redevelopment of a building on an existing site, the, the very strict requirements of MS4 are, are not so applicable. Not applicable? And, um, really? And that most of the drainage is already existing on the site. Kevin, maybe you could speak to that and walk us through it. Yeah, he should, because we've run into issues on the Berlin Turnpike on a much smaller site where off-site drainage was an issue over there. So that's why I was wondering. But... Well, that, that was an undeveloped site. Go ahead. Uh, for, for the record, uh, Kevin that, Johnson. Um, so again, as I, when, when I was doing my presentation, I mentioned that there is an existing drainage system, uh, several catch basins. They're predominantly around the rear and the south side of the building, uh, and they're connected and they come out to the Silas Dean. Um, he, he did not... Uh, you know, require any, uh, you know, further treatment of that. Um, basically, he, he was looking for, you know, as he mentioned in his memo, some, you know, LID uh, features. Um, he, he did mention uh, possibly incorporating what we did include along that front uh, landscape strip. Um, but other than that, uh, there was no, uh, you know, other specific comments about drainage. Uh, there was the comment from planning uh, regarding uh, a topographic and, and drainage plan. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the Gugliottis have agreed uh, for us to at least do, you know, a, a topographic survey to establish, uh, you know, spot shots to confirm grades and so forth. But in other words, he thinks the additional and, uh, green areas that you've put in islands and everything else along the side and so forth are uh, are an, an improvement over what exists. Oh, definitely. I mean, we're reducing the impervious coverage. We're increasing pervious green space by, okay. uh, somewhere, I forget the exact number. I want to say it's between three and 4% additional green space on site. So, I mean, we're, we're not, we're, we're not adding to the building footprint. We're not enlarging it. Um, we're not expanding the bituminous area, we're reducing it. Okay, Kevin, I, I, I can argue this point a little bit, but I, I thought maybe there would be more green added to this site, but then you have, but I'm, I would I'll probably almost be happy with what I see or can be acceptable of it. Now, the only other thing is when I go around that site, over the years, I've noticed a big concrete block on the north side and a couple of other oddball things hanging out on that site. And I assume the landscaping on those sides will be taking care of those things and removing them and improving it. The fencing up front seems to be pretty solid and looks intact to me, but of course it's hard to tell on some of that kind of thing. But uh, otherwise, uh, that, those are my, uh, I think, my uh, concerns at this point, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you, George. 
anybody else have any questions for the applicant or their representatives? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is Pete. I'd like to address a couple points, if I may. Sure. Uh, let me first start by saying I think this is a great improvement that uh, uh, they're doing to this site, and uh, I I applaud it, frankly. I mean, uh, moving their operation across the street, uh, changing the building the way they're doing it, uh, adding the green space, uh, I, I think is great. So I, I have no issues with any of that. And as I said, I think um, the applicant's doing a great job with that. Uh, the one thing that's still unclear to me, uh, Peter, maybe I'll go back to you or Kevin. Uh, this debate you guys are having in that driveway, should it be curved? Should it be straight? Is it safe? Is it unsafe? Uh, as you guys know, I'm an engineer and the thing that uh, always concerns me is safety. I used to be a nuclear engineer, so you got to worry about safety. Uh, and if you're, if you're, I think uh, someone mentioned if you're going north and then you try to go into that uh, drive with that curve, does that become a little bit awkward and unsafe? Is that what our engineer is really worried about? If he is, you know, I'll let you guys address that. If he is, I don't see a big deal in changing that. I mean, it's almost a philosophical debate. Uh, why are you guys so reluctant to, to make that change? Oh, no, um, I, I, I think I mentioned in my presentation, we'd, we'd be happy to, you know, to discuss with Mr. Greger. Um, we, we just felt the solution we had proposed, um, you know, created the maximum green and, and directed the, the traffic, uh, you know, in, in a smooth flow down that drive aisle, that northerly drive aisle. I mean, we'd be happy to modify it. Okay. Um, we, we just felt that leaving uh, the paving, um, you know, straight, in and, and then a transition was just more awkward than a definitive soft curve directing the traffic. Yeah, I mean, if it's a matter of aesthetics, I would agree with you. If it's a matter of safety concerns, I think you, you ought to discuss it with the town engineer. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I, I said in my presentation, we'd be happy to. It's just we got the comments yesterday and uh, did our best to address everything today for, for this meeting. So. Uh, I'm not saying we're we're opposed to changing it. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Anybody else have questions? If I, um, if Mr. I Chairman. Just... Yeah, Tom. Um, uh, while I'm, I tend to be uh, impressed and favorably disposed uh, to the applicant's application on this, I'm I'm. I'm a bit uh, uh, confused or uncertain with regards to the uh, level of authority that the commission has with regards to this application. It is a, an application for a special use permit, uh, and uh, and my my main concern with you know this this overall development is the uh, uh, the amount of uh, existing impervious impervious coverage of the of the entire lot uh, I'm not sure what the level of discretion or or authority the Commission would have in imposing uh, conditions as it relates to uh, the landscaping requirements obviously the, the applicants uh, letter of January 31st that is the letter from closed Jensen and Miller uh, signed by Mr. Johnson uh, indicates that um, uh, the this current uh, uh, level of imperviousness on the site does not comply with current landscaping uh, regulations, but he, uh, he indicates or implies that uh, uh, that since the the current uh, uh, situation on the site as it relates to landscaping and the degree of impervious coverage uh, was uh, performed long before the uh, current uh, landscaping regulations, um, that, uh, that, that this 
site does not need to conform to the uh, the current landscaping uh, regulations. I'm. I just want to know what the you know what kinds of uh, authority the commission would have in imposing landscaping requirements to conform to the uh, current uh, regulations uh, that the committee could uh, could exercise. And I guess this is more a question for uh, Denise, uh, uh, the town planner's office, to to respond to. But I'd also. Uh, uh, appreciate any comments that uh, uh, Mr. Alter or Mr. Johnson might uh, 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 might pose in, in response to my query here. If you want, I can respond, Mr. Roberts. Um, sure, go ahead. This is an application under Section 5.6 of your regulations, which is a different sort of application than a direct special permit application that you might get for a vacant property. Um, and what it, what it speaks to is, is Mr. Dean, is, is really the purpose and intent is to permit the redevelopment or renovation. We fall under the renovation category of properties and business zones when such improvements will result in the sole opinion of the commission in functional and aesthetic improvements in the overall character of the property, the neighborhood and the community. Renovation means changes to a site that do not involve the demolition of buildings or the construction of new or replacement buildings, but may include structural alterations such as facade replacement, restoration, relocation of doorways windows, reconstruction of parking areas, and similar changes. The commission may, where deemed appropriate in the sole judgment of the commission, allowed redevelopment or renovation of property in a business zone in a manner that does not comply with the strict application of these regulations by modifying one or more of the requirements of the regulations as will result in substantial functional and aesthetic improvements in the overall character of the property, the neighborhood and the community, including building design, site design, building landscaping, perimeter landscaping, parking area landscaping, signage, similar attributes, provide for the appropriate use of the land and the neighborhood, provide for the orderly development of the land and the neighborhood, protect the public health and safety and otherwise further further purposes of this section and these regulations. This section, this 5.6 section of your regulations gives you the authority to recognize that sites that are to be renovated as this one is, can't meet the strict application of your regulations that you could demand on a blank slate. We don't have a blank slate. And um, that's why I think you adopted this regulation was to give you the flexibility to do that. So that's my explanation. Kind of in response to uh, to to the uh, to the the obverse of what uh, uh, Mr. Alter indicated, it it seems to me that uh, then the committee ultimately would have the authority to uh, 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 to uh, require adherence to uh, the most current uh, version of uh, say the uh, landscaping regulations I'm just I'm just looking at, at uh, empowerment here I'm not looking at in terms of imposing requirements or not imposing requirements uh, but uh, just what the level of discretion that the committee or that the commission has uh, with regards to applications such as this for sites uh, similar to this. Uh, could I have a response uh, to, from, uh, uh, from our town planner's office on this? Sure. So, Tom, um, Section 5.4 of our regulations, um, which refers to impervious coverage um, in the town center zone, 
Um, it allows for the commission to approve up to 100% impervious coverage. This doesn't mean that it's inherently um, allowable. It's, it's by commission approval. Um, we have asked the applicant to go through the landscaping requirements uh, to demonstrate and ask for waivers where they can't comply. Um, we recognize that um, the proposal is an improvement to uh, the existing conditions and um, did not anticipate that they would be able to meet the current requirements. We just wanted them to go through the demonstration. Um, would you uh, uh, would you concur in um, uh, in a uh, an evaluation of the uh, January thirty one letter from Close Jensen Miller that uh, that that much of the uh, uh, the aspects of the letter. Uh, really amounts to uh, uh, requests for uh, uh, you know, waivers of uh, landscaping requirements, such as uh, on page one of the letter uh, at the bottom of the page uh, relating to section 6.1D. Uh, it ends with the landscape area proposed 19.2%, uh, which is down from the 25% uh, uh, requirement uh, That's of correct. the regular. So the, the, one could one could interpret that to mean that they are requesting uh, a waiver uh, of the requirements from 25% down to 19.2%. That is correct. Okay. All right. So it's it, what we're talking about is the, is the commission has. Uh, discretion here. Uh, uh, you do have the authority to approve that request. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for the applicant or their team? I guess I, I just want to comment that I appreciate um, your willingness to discuss with the town engineers comment on the northerly driveway. Um, I appreciate and understand the uh, uh, difficulty that would be posed by, you know, addressing some of the other comments, such as the, you know, the width of the drive aisles. Um, you know, if just just to put this kind of in into a context, I mean, if if they were coming here looking to put in a porch and patio store, we wouldn't be having any of this conversation. Um, you know, if they wanted to keep the same kind of cream-colored, gross stucco facade with the same sign on the front of it that they're proposing to have you know, as part of the parapet, we wouldn't be having any of these conversations. So, um, you know, it, it's solely because they want to move their business across the road and expand it that we're, you know, kind of perseverating over, you know, shortcomings in a fully developed site that uh, has been kind of underutilized for a number of years now. And, uh, you know, I remember when I first got on the commission back in the 1800s, um, Commissioner Scott Murphy was here and he'd quite often comment something of something along the lines of, you know, we don't want to have the perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, you know, the, I, I think this, you know, this proposal is is good from both a, a redevelopment and adaptive reuse and a, an economic development perspective. And, um, you know, they're adding green space within the parking lots they're you know they're upgrading the the appearance of the building they're upgrading the appearance of you know the facility around it um you know it's just kind of the the happenstance of timing that you know we've been sort of fast tracking this to accommodate everybody's desires that 
just made it difficult for um, you know the professionals to communicate with with a lot of a lot of breathing room in it. So um, you know, I, I guess my comments are that I that I do appreciate what what has been presented to us and. Um, you know, in practically every respect, I see it as an improvement over the existing conditions. Um, and and I just do want to kind of follow up on uh, Commissioner Dean's comment that, uh, you know, we did write these regulations particularly to allow us greater flexibility to deal with projects um, such as this, where they're taking, you know, not a blank slate of, you know, virgin land. Um, you know, but something that that's you know essentially lying fallow from a, from an economic development perspective, and you know trying to turn it into something a, a little more useful and attractive. So um, I'll get off my soapbox and ask if anybody else has anything that they they want to say here. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yep, Jim. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for those comments. I wholeheartedly agree with everything you've said. And as I said, I do remember when it was the finest supermarket. And due to whatever reasons, not much has happened to improve the look of that building. And what has been presented this evening is a phenomenal improvement. And maybe it's not perfect, but Mr. Alter hit the nail on the head and really laid it right out. We don't have a blank canvas here. We're dealing with a pre-existing situation as 99% of the projects are in Weathersfield. We're a fully, almost a fully built town. We aren't Cromwell. We aren't Glastonbury. Barry, we don't have an abundance of land. So everywhere we go is a struggle. So if we want to get, you know, handcuff people coming to Weathersfield because we don't have impervious surface and everything's not perfect, well, we might as well just put the closed sign outside. This is a very unique site because adjacent to this to the north is a piece of town town property, which is now just locked in to be green space because it was presented to this commission years ago to do something with it. And this commission didn't want to do anything with it. So now this is a unique situation where in all my years I've been around it. If nothing's happened, I doubt anything's going to happen to that town green space there, unless you're going to put some picnic tables there. So the green space that yes, the town owns softens and helps this space, this area tremendously. So as a whole package of from corner to corner, I think this is a great improvement. And I thank the, uh, I thank the, uh, the uh, owners for sticking with Weathersfield. I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> All right, uh, anybody else have any, anything? If I may, my name is uh, Leonardo, it's not Claudia, that's my daughter. Uh, my name is Leonardo <laughs> Uriari. Uh, this is our fourth project on Silas Dean Highway in Wethersfield. Uh, we've done, and we always buy the junk and we make it look beautiful. So you need to have a little trust in us that we are spending a lot of money. We hired the great people, Kevin Johnson and Peter Alter to help us do this project. We want to thank everybody in the commission for, for helping us out. I want to thank Denise for her guidance. Even though I get a little crazy sometimes with, uh, with too many questions and I drive her nuts with stuff, I appreciate your help, Denise. And I thank all of you guys uh, for helping us uh, hopefully approve this, uh, this, this, this project that we have in front of us. And we are, we're bringing young people to the neighborhood who are going to shop there. We're going to get gas there. Mr. Nides, who saw us the building, is excited for us because all of our students can go eat at his restaurants next door, like Max Bebo's and Vito's and stuff. So we are bringing a benefit to the um, to Weathersfield. And um, I hope you guys are happy with our proposal and I wanna thank you in advance. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else have any questions, comments, anything that we need to wrap up before we close the hearing? I don't know. Make ask a motion. Attorney Alter, if he has any, Mr. Ask Chair, Attorney uh, Alter if he has any final comments first. The only thing I, on this issue of the Northern Driveway, what I would ask you to do if you see fit to move forward on this application this evening would be just to leave a condition of approval that uh, 
our engineers will resolve any safety or aesthetic issue with the town engineer um, with the shape of that particular entrance. It's not a big problem. It's just a, a matter of addressing what Mr. Allard mentioned, which is a safety issue versus a green space aesthetic issue. I'm sure we can find a, a solution there. I agree. I think, you know, town staff and the uh, applicants can come together on a solution there. Yeah, and I, I, I also think that, you know, there, there's the whole right of way width portion of the entrance that is being overlooked before you even get to the gentle curve. So I'm, I'm not thinking there's a big issue there, but I didn't get my engineering degree yet. So. <laughs> um, anybody else have anything before we close the hearing? Make right. a motion to motion? close the hearing, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, George. Is there a second? Second, Edwards. All right, motion by George, second by Dave uh, Edwards to close the hearing. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, would someone like to make a motion for purposes of uh, starting discussion? Mr. Chairman, which alternates are sitting on this one? Um, see, I seated you on the last one, so I'll I'll put Dave in on this one. Okay, thank you. Dave I'll make a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion make to motion. approve application three zero one two 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 dash Z. Um, uh, and the one component, I, I don't have a problem with the north driveway myself, but I'm comfortable leaving it with the uh, developer to work it out with town staff and whatever other conditions that my fellow commissioners deem fit for this. I'll second your motion. And uh, this is George. And uh, I also hope that the town engineer will inquire at uh, DOT on that too when they're discussing. George, I'm actually not worried about it and, and I don't think I'm we should not, get hung I, up I on am it. worried about them more than anybody. Not our, well, yeah, not our private engineer and our town staff. Yeah. I mean... But anyway, it, that's another issue. I hope right. it won't be a problem. Well, that, I think the part that Derek was concerned about is, is on the private property, not in the state right-of-way. Yeah, I think you're right. Right, right. But, and also, right. truly, people cut in the corner. It, it, if you get that far, the net out isn't that great because you can't get out on Wells Road. So <laughs> you, you, you're actually shooting, probably shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be as to easy me, as it is now. That's for sure. Yeah, with the islands or anything else. And the place yeah. being full of cars. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to they were just as well. Um, Denise, is, is there anything that we need to do with respect to either the the waiver non waivers or the the roof sign non roof sign, or just approve it as submitted? I would, um, as a condition, approve the waivers um, that were presented. And then in terms of the, the signage, um, the Design Review Commission was um, supportive of what was proposed. Um, depending on your feeling, if you are also supportive, um, I could you know, uh, just leave that as a condition to um, work that out with town staff. I, I'm comfortable with my proposal to approve as presented uh, with the waivers and I'll take the roof sign as presented. I'll yeah, accept I mean, I that roof think... sign, but um, hope we don't see more of these. But I don't, this is such a shallow face in this building that it would be hard to, to put any kind of signage below where it's being presented. Well, well George, we could leave the uh, I think you gotta go four inch lolly columns there. 
they they're pretty yeah, nice. Or, or, yeah, or or the cream colored Alamo on the top of the building. That <laughs> yeah, in. yeah, you really it, could. It, so, Mr. Chairman, the only right. other thing that I would um, suggest is just in terms of the number of parking um, spaces, just because it was something that's uh, not specifically uh, determined by the regulations. Just if you're um, accepting of their uh, proposed calculation. I am fine with the proposed calculations with my motion. Yeah, that. Yeah, that, that, that the second. Okay. All right. Any, That's all. Any, all right. Thank you, Denise. Very much. Any discussion? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Tom Dean here. Um, I just want to indicate I. I continue to be uh, favorably impressed by the application. Uh, I tend to support the, uh, uh, the motion as, as, uh, as has been uh, presented and, and modified as per the discussion. Uh, I'm you know, disappointed that we're not uh, able to uh, 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 adopt uh, an approval that uh, would substantially reduce the uh, uh, the amount of imperviousness on the site, but recognizing that that would probably work uh, an injustice to the applicant by forcing him to do much more than what uh, uh, he would or, you know, ordinarily be required for a typical special use permit for we're just talking about a change of use from one kind of business to another. So, um, so I, I uh, I appreciate the, uh, the efforts of the commission and the discussion that has taken place, and uh, um, I guess uh, that's uh, that's pretty much it in terms of uh, uh, my commentary on this. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Anybody else, Tony? Rich, a quick compliment to Attorney Altner for refreshing our memories about uh, 5.6 of the regulations. It's something I don't remember reading or hearing about since we did the 10 year master plan of conservation and development. So thank you, Peter, for refreshing that issue. It's uh, to have this building occupied is to generate good taxes. As uh, George would know, I would have some relevance to that. Personal property, 60 to 80 students every day is only a compliment to the community and uh, not just for, uh, for the traffic pattern and people there, but the lunches and dinners in the area as well as the, the retail establishment so great compliment to uh, your family for making magic out of this site thank you thanks tony and, Ms. and uh, tony if i may i've been on my soapbox all night 60 to 80 potential new residents of weathersfield once they come here and see what it's all about <laughs> with their hair looking great you and me both. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? If not, uh, I guess we'll vote on the application. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Motion carries. Applications approved. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. And Thanks for your time. Yeah. Good, Thank you. good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Uh, other business. There's nothing. Next item: uh, minutes of January 4th and February 1st. Has anybody had a chance to look those over? Yes. Make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you want me to do them individually or together? Um. Uh, Let's do them individually because I think there'll be different people eligible to vote. Right. Okay. I make a motion to approve the minutes of January 4th, 2022. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Motion by George, second by uh, Commissioner Dean. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, next one is the February 1st minutes. I'll do it a motion again, Mr. Chairman. 
to approve the, the minutes of February 1st, 2022. Okay. All right, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, second by Pete and Bruni. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions? I believe that's the one I was not at. Yep. So I, I have a question for Denise. Whatever happened to all of the applications that start with 2000? I mean, all of a sudden we're like at 3008. New year? Um, it should all be chronological. Um, oh, okay. I mean, uh, I can't log into my VPN quick enough, but you know, there there should not be an issue in terms of um, okay the application numbers. All right. No, I thought I thought we like skipped the whole thousand. The no, whole 2, unfortunately, thousand, there's so. just been that many. Okay. I guess I wasn't paying attention. Um, next thing we have correspondence. We have the Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies conference invitation. Um, um, so I did receive notice from uh, about four members indicating their interest in uh, attending that evening. So if there's anyone else, uh, please let me know and I will include you in that registration. Yeah, and if anybody's on the fence, I would encourage it. One thing I noticed, you know, it's kind of sad that the uh, the deadline for registration was March 22nd, 2019, which <laughs> uh, was the last time, I guess, that they had one of these. So. Uh, also included their quarterly newsletter, uh, comment about an application from Hartford, and something about the railroad vegetation management plan. Is there anything? that we should really know about that? Or is that just for information? Not specifically. I just wanted to, you know, in case you might get inquiries by, you know, um, people noticing any any changes uh, in the next couple of weeks, that's just um, a heads up. Okay. Uh, Denise, this is Tom Dean. Um, a couple of uh, issues, one going back to the uh, uh, the the March uh, meeting of the uh, 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 Planning Zoning Association. Uh, add me to the uh, list of those that would uh, be willing to attend. Sure. Also, uh, you had mentioned uh, the issue of of people receiving uh, certificates for longevity. Um, back in 2020. Uh, there were a number of uh, members of this commission that were to uh, receive, uh, I think, 12-year certificates. Uh, I was one of them. Uh, those certificates, to my knowledge, have never been issued. Um, uh, I'd appreciate uh, if you would be able to, uh, to get some clarification on the status of those uh, uh, pass uh, certifications and uh, notify the, mem the applicable members of the uh, commission as it relates to that, whether or not those certificates would be presented at this meeting or whether they have already been received by uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Weathersfield Town Planner's Office. Um, um, I am not stuff. sure if they're intending on pre presenting previous winners. Um, we are not in receipt of the certificates in the office, um, but I can reach out to the CFPZA and see um, if they were uh, printed, if they have them on hand, and or if we could get you a copy. Okay. Yeah, I was one of those that was supposed to be a recipient and uh, never got you know anything relating to that, and the meeting was canceled due to the pandemic. So I think things have been fairly chaotic uh, uh, since then. So I'm not surprised that there have been uh, things that kind of uh, washed down the culvert, so to speak, uh, without anybody noticing. But I did think I'd mention that, and, and there may be 
uh, one or more members of the commission that uh, uh, are in that that status or are eligible for uh, such certificates, uh, you know, at at this upcoming meeting due to the longevity of their service. Uh, thanks very much. Much sure. Obliged. I believe uh, Commissioner Hammer also was the recipient the same year, so I will uh, confirm with him whether or not he received the certificate. Okay, I thought uh, he was going to be one of those because he served actually longer than I. So, um, and I'm not sure if he and I, he and I were the only ones, uh, but uh, uh, appreciate some uh, research on that. And and when I reviewed uh, the materials relating to the uh, uh, the application of herbicide, uh, which was uh, for the the railroad property, um, I I was some I'm I'm somewhat uh, concerned about uh, uh, that, particularly with res with respect to the you know the half life of the herbicides that are going to be used and the danger of of such herbicides being, you know, washed into aquifers, or uh, since the, that railroad runs essentially through uh, around the edge of a lot of residential properties in this town, uh, the you know potential risk to residents uh, from uh, poisoning due to the application of, of herbicide, both poisoning in terms of of human tissues and also groundwater. Uh, poisoning from the application of that. And I noticed they didn't indicate any particular kinds of chemicals that they were uh, specifying. So I would, my concern is whether or not there's any oversight, uh, you know, beyond DEP uh, as it relates to the application of uh, those chemicals uh, uh, inside the town. That's it, thanks. Okay, thank you, Tom. Um, is there anything else before we adjourn? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is Pete. Uh, Denise, uh, Hi. I really think you're doing a great job supporting us here. So I wanna commend you for uh, jumping in and you know doing all this prep for us. What's going on with the town? Are they gonna give you a raise or someone else coming? What, what's the plan? I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm a little curious too. <laughs> yeah, I would, say, I would imagine. Um, they are in the process of um, um, making a determination and mm -hmm. I am hopeful that in the next uh, few weeks that will be clarified. Okay. Oh, long process. Point, Pete, Very. because th yeah. this is George, and I have the same feeling. And I've heard from yeah. other people in town that Denise deserves to maybe get uh, a, a strong, I'll say pat on the back, but uh, she's been doing a great job there. And uh, I was even ready to go in and talk to the town manager about it, and I haven't gotten there yet. Well, I'm I suggesting think, uh, Denise, you deserve something out of this. You've been doing yeah, a great I'm job. I'm suggesting that this commission make a point uh, on that. That's kind of what I'm alluding to. I thought you might. Yeah, okay. There's yeah. a willing. I, I don't know how we would do that, uh, Mr. Chairman, but uh, I mean, she's given us great support here in, in, uh, in a very quick term. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have a conversation with the town manager on behalf of the commission. Perfect. Thank you. Good. All right. Anything else? Uh, the only other thing that I have to add, um, I did provide you with um, some correspondence this afternoon uh, regarding the um, cannabis establishments, um, specifically a survey of uh, municipalities and their responses from zoning officials, as well as some mapping that was provided from the uh, from an article I read the other day in the uh, Insider. Um, additionally, the town manager has indicated that the town council will be discussing this again on their upcoming meeting on the 22nd. 
Um, at this point, they have not looked for uh, additional information from me, um, but I am prepared to provide um, any uh, additional information that they're looking for. Um, if anybody uh, wishes to attend, um, let me know and I can have a Zoom link forwarded to you by the manager. Um, the only other thing, uh, it's not uh, noted on the agenda, but I did receive an application today um, that will be on the um, March 1st agenda. It's an application for the Charles. They're looking for um, a one year temporary outdoor uh, tent. So the difference um, from last year's application, um, they are looking to use the same tent, but they're going to relocate it onto the side yard where ultimately they, they would like to um, have their permanent uh, outdoor dining. They're just not ready to proceed with that application at this point. Um, so um, anticipate that at your next meeting. All right, well, thank you very much. Denise, can you have them forward a Zoom invitation to me, please? Absolutely. Jim? Jim? Want a motion, Mr. Chairman? Desperately. Motion. <laughs> motion to close the meeting. Second. Okay. All right. Motion by Jim, second by George. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you guys. Have a good night. Good night, all. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.